Welcome to another Pixlet tutorial. And this tutorial accompanies lesson 17 of my Pixlet tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're going to retouch a portrait. So let's just open the image I'm going to use. And that is the uh, image. And I'm going to use the, the following tool. So it's the, the Spot Heal tool, the Clone Stamp tool, of course the brush tool and then some of the uh, adjustments color and balance and brightness and contrast and the Gaussian blur filter so let's get started what I want to look at is removing the imperfections from the, the face so there's some there's freckles there's moles there's some rough skin over on this side and then look at smoothing that skin and doing some highlighting and color balance to the whole photo. Finally, resizing it because it's quite a large photo. First, we need to duplicate the layer, preserve the original. And then using the Spot Heal tool first, start to remove some of those imperfections. Now you've got the, the size up here that you can adjust and two options here. Blending nearby for me seems to work the the, the best because it is taking pixels from around that area and blending them uh, and you can make the brush bigger but the bigger you make the brush let's go up a little bit and I wanted to remove some of the area here it's going to look quite out of place depending on sort of what's around it and it's sort of to me that area needs the clone stamp tool to try and get a an area of, of better skin to clone over here. So the smaller the brush, just to go over the freckles and the moles, using the high the navigator to zoom in so you can really get in close and see where areas you need to adjust. And it can take some time to work on a portrait to really remove the areas and get it to where you want it. Now the other tool is the clone stamp tool. So in using this one you've got to select with the command key on a Mac or the control key on a Windows machine. Hold that down with the left mouse button it becomes like a target. This is the area of the, the face that I want to clone. So I want to work on this section over here on the right. I'm going to zoom in a bit and holding the command key, cloning that area and just start to work on this area and it's going to take some time because you don't want to go too far like in this area here is too light and because the, the portrait's got some, some makeup on it it's going to be hard to match it. So the area here, I've got to look for some skin around this area that can possibly be cloned because it's closer to that color. You've got to keep resampling it all the time. Just keep holding that command key, control key to resample. And the longer you work on it, the better it will become. So I'm going to keep working on that and then I'll come back and show you where I am at this point. So this is my, my attempt at smoothing out the imperfections using the clone stamp tool and the spot heal tool. This is the uh, originals, what we started with. And I'm going to move them side by side. You can see there's a difference there. So that's sort of first stage. Let's close the original. And what we want to look at now is how to smooth the skin. We're going to duplicate this layer and rename it to add the filter. I'm going to add the Gaussian Blur filter to smooth out the skin. So on Filter, select Gaussian Blur, and it's going to blur the whole image, but then we'll use some opacity and reduce the opacity to make the other features become visible. So I'm going to do about 150 and OK. Then toggle the layer settings and reduce the opacity down to about 50, which makes a, a considerable difference to the skin. 
Now, the rest of the image is not too blurry, but what would be useful is to erase any of the blur from the eyes and the mouth. So using the eraser tool, you can just see that the eyes are whitening a little bit there. Some of that blur is coming off. Comparing the left eye to the right eye. And do the same with the mouth. Just remove some of the blur from those features. And then I would save that at this stage, just sort of save drafts of each step in case something goes wrong. You can come back later and just load the image from that point. So, for example, we're going to save this image and call it Portrait Retouched After Filter and save that as a JPEG at 100% just in case something goes wrong. So I won't do that at the moment. So just before we look at the contrast and the brightness, it's time to flatten the image. We've built up the image using a number of layers. So if I make that bigger. And so it would make sense to flatten it, merge all those layers together and start with a new image with just one layer. It wouldn't be very useful to save your image once you've flattened it because if you have to bring it back in because you've made a mistake, you're not going to have all the different layers to go back and adjust. So this is the point to save it as a draft. But to flatten it, I'm going to Layer and Flatten Image. And now you can see it's just one layer. And now we can look at working on the, the contrast and the brightness. So I'm going to, again, duplicate the layer. Contrast. And going into Adjustment, Brightness and Contrast. And then have a little play around with the settings here till you get something that you're happy with. So I've just brightened that and adjusted that to something I'm happy with. And then we look at adjusting the color balance. So you've got the red, green and blue offsets to play with till you can get the color to what you want it to be. So have a little fiddle, a little experiment, and uh, I'll show you what I've done in a second. So this is the image after I've adjusted the color, the color balance and the brightness and contrast. And again, it's time to flatten the image. So layer, flatten image. Probably save it again at this point as well. And then the last step is to do a bit of resizing and some cropping. It's quite a large image and it's at 39% at this point. So I'm going to start with cropping it. So select the crop tool and you can, you can crop by changing the different constraints. So I could change it to a particular size that I wanted. If I wanted a 640 by 480 image, Put those characteristics into the crop tool and then crop it now you only get that much if you wanted a 640 by 480 picture that's the size of the crop that you're going to be able to do which is a, a bit difficult to fit everything in you have to really resize the picture uh, to, to get the whole face in so I really will do that later change the size I don't want to apply those changes so I'm going to have no restrict I'll just let you do aspect ratio and crop because I really don't need the hand in too much although it's going to be difficult to not have it in so perhaps there pick the area that you want to include and double click to crop it, it hasn't changed the size that much it's still 1244 by 1244 so a pure square at the moment because it's one to one aspect ratio so then go to the free transform, holding the shift key, just make it a bit smaller. Yes, to apply the changes, and then save that one. So this is the portrait. Retouched 
final as a JPEG full strength. And let's find the image on the desktop. And that's the final image. We find the original. So here's the original. And there's the one on the left that would be that has been retouched. The imperfections removed, the skin smoothed, adjusting the colour, the contrast, the brightness, resizing it and saving it. So that's all for now.